Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay guys, today we are doing a video that has been highly requested over my time on booktube uh, because I do a lot of where to start with kind of videos. So um, for specific authors, sometimes for genres, today is more of kind of a genre or like mode canon of reading. Um, and that is today we're going to talk about where to start with classics. So the question I get a lot is, hey, I would like to get into classics a little bit more. I know you read them. I am definitely a visible lover of classics. You can just see that in the background a lot of, of a lot of my videos. But I do try to read a few classics at least a year. This year, I think I'll read at least seven, eight, nine, something like that. Um, it's not the only thing I read, but it is a part of my reading diet. It's one that I really enjoy, treasure, look forward to expanding sort of my um, vocabulary or experience with classics. And I, the thing I feel really passionately about classics is that I think that the way that they're taught in school is not great because it makes people feel really intimidated by them and like they're really difficult to get into or like their work or whatever. A lot of these books will take a little more effort to read just because a lot of them are older, but there's a reason that these are classics. A lot of them at the core of them have like cracking good plots fascinating characters and timeless themes. They are books that are well worth your time. And I think if people approach them with kind of a sense of playfulness and engagement, as opposed to like burdensome, like, oh, this is something I should read, that goes a long way. And then I also think knowing your existing reading preferences can really help you select a classic that you're much more likely to enjoy. Um, and then if you kind of build from there, you're much more likely to have success. So I'm gonna start with like my true answer of like honestly this is probably where you should start but then I'm gonna branch out from because it's like a boring answer basically <laughs> um, then I'm gonna branch out into some ones that are a little more obscure or ones that I think that um, still would be really friendly points of entries that don't get as much love and uh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a few that I think are sort of door stoppers that are intimidating but that are worth your time if you're looking for like a tome to consume that is a classic. So let's start with like my honest to goodness answer about where I think you should start. At the core of how I think people would best be served if they are trying to get into classics, my answer is pick some stories that you kind of already know because they are so ubiquitous in our culture and or pick ones that are basically kind of the foundational texts of very popular genre fiction today. So what do I mean by that? Probably like if I was just gonna give a generic recommendation to someone off the streets of where I think they should start with classics, um, it probably would be Pride and Prejudice. Uh, not for, I mean, if you just like hate romance in all form, like maybe not this one, one of the other ones I'm gonna mention might be better. But just in terms of like, ease of reading, <laughs> um, like Clarity of Prose, very funny. And the story is just such the bedrock of all like of like our current comedic tradition, both in film and in books. The DNA of Pride and Prejudice is just in so many things that you already know, that the story is going to be familiar. The characters are going to be familiar. Even if you don't know exactly what happens in this book, a lot of it is going to be very recognizable to you. And I think that that really would help with some of the intimidation factor. So if I was going to give you just just the one to the highest number of people, this is probably what I would say, just because I think, like I said, this is just approachable. And and uh, yes, there's a love story at the heart of it, but a lot of it is about like socioeconomic differences and like having to, like limited choices and what you do in those circumstances, whether you can really stay true to yourself or if you have to make compromises. Like there's really interesting universal themes that yes, ultimately do revolve around two people getting together, but also the characters in this are just so funny. I mean, this is just a great, so if I was just gonna give you the one, it would probably be this one. My second choice we won't get to until later, but this would probably be the one I would give you. Branching out from that, my recommendation is find stories that are really well known. So like Jane Eyre is often a go-to for people trying to get into classics because like there's a lot of retellings of Jane Eyre. There's a lot of like, the story is sort of in the DNA of our culture. Likewise, in general with the Brontes, like I think Wuthering Heights is a great example because again, there's a lot of retellings. I think that the beats of this story are pretty familiar. This is very angsty. So if you are a teen who has some like need for angst, 
this this is going to be your friend. I think you'll like this. Um, so, but you know, the Brontes in general, I think people tend to know a little bit about. Shakespeare is a great choice for this, like Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, some of these like really well-known plots that are, have been retold a lot that is that are going to be familiar. Shakespeare does have um, a little bit higher barrier to entry in terms of the language is a bit more archaic. But that being said, I, my number one recommendation to get into Shakespeare is read it out loud. Don't read it silently. Wait till you're at home and there's no one around or, you know, hey, have other people in your house read along with you. I think that would be super fun. But if you hear it out loud, even if you don't know some of the individual words, it, it helps you kind of like get through it. So um, Shakespeare is a great one for this. And then the other one, the other author I would recommend in terms of just like really known in our culture and like you probably have heard parts of the story before would be Dickens. My personal favorite is Great Expectations. The other thing about Dickens, you have to remember, he was basically kind of like the James Patterson or Stephen King. Like he was a hugely best-selling author in the Victorian period. And that's because his characters are so memorable. His plots are bonkers. Like bonkers things happen in these books. So like just in terms, like in this one, there's a, an old lady who's like in a decaying wedding dress and like won't let anyone touch her like moldy, crusty wedding cake from when she was jilted. I mean, like there's very memorable scenes, people, places in a Dickens novel. So I think that there's a lot for you to kind of wrap your arms around in terms of plot. And again, I just think that these are very recognizable in our culture. You could go with A Christmas Carol. That would be a great Dickens to try because like surely you've seen that Muppets adaptation at some point in your childhood, right? And then like my parallel recommendation along with these ones that you, these are stories you kind of maybe know a little bit already. So that will sort of hopefully lower the intimidation factor um, is to go with uh genre classics. Classics that founded an entire genre of literature that are, continue to be very popular today. So for instance, if you really like mysteries, then the number one obvious place that you should go if you are trying to get into classics is Sherlock Holmes. Like you, you know Sherlock Holmes, it's been retold so many times. And they're short stories, which is a very approachable way to sort of like dip your toes in. You're not signing up for like whole books. The longest Sherlock Holmes uh, pieces are novellas. So this is a wonderful place if you like if you know you like mystery already just start with reading some Sherlock Holmes obviously I'm also going to tell you to read some Agatha Christie not sure that this is like a classic classic it's not like this is hundreds of years old but these are coming up on a hundred years old actually uh, yeah Mysterious Affair Styles will be a hundred years old next year so um these are you know coming up on true true classics and just start reading some Agatha Christie they're very plot driven. She has a lovely sense of humor. She actually reminds me quite a bit of Jane Eyre in terms of the way that she uses her characters and sort of like flat stereotypical characters to um, communicate humor, but also clues. Um, so yeah, I definitely think Agatha Christie and Arthur Conan Doyle, they got your back if you are uh, somebody who knows that they like mystery. If you know you like horror, you've got Dracula, you've got Japlyn Hyde. I would recommend uh, Frankenstein. I'm gonna be doing a uh, read along of Dracula later in the month. So I can't officially recommend that to you in terms of, I've never read that one before. Um, but Frankenstein was a really, it was very interesting to read because the story is quite different than the way it is presented in pop culture. And I think that helps keep you engaged because since you already know how the story should go, it kind of helps keep your attention. Um, so yeah, anyway, Frankenstein, if you like horror would be a great choice. And then if you are a fantasy person, uh, again, coming up on, I mean, 80 years old, this is an old book, Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien. Y'all, yeah, this is the best. You, you've you likely seen the movie adaptations. If you haven't, I would actually, this is a situation where I would actually recommend watching The Fellowship of the Ring before starting the book, because I think the biggest barrier to entry of this particular book is that there's a lot of names and there's a lot of like filler at the beginning. Let's just be real. I love like this is one of my very favorite books, but um, there's a lot of filler at the beginning. So go watch The Fellowship of the Ring, then embark on this journey. And that's a great way if you know you like fantasy already, go ahead and just dip your toes back into classic. So those are my true, like that's where you should start recommendations or like my, my best how to get you into classics advice I can give. But some of you are cool kids and you think, you know what, Mara, I, other people can read Pride and Prejudice. I am too cool to read Pride and Prejudice. It's too basic of a recommendation for me. You, you're a little pretentious. It's okay. I am too. We all have that side of us. And sometimes you want like a little bit more off the beaten path, or maybe you tried Pride and Prejudice. You really didn't like it. You're looking for different recommendations that are a little not as kind of stereotypical as the ones I just gave. 
Fair enough, we've all got that. So after Pride and Prejudice, the second classic I would most recommend somebody start with, because again, it's short and really interesting and has a lot of resonance and reads really well to a modern reader's sensibilities. That is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. The reason that I say, I mean, like I mentioned a couple of things. It's short, it does, I think, have a lot of sort of very modern takes on the world or like perspectives on the world. I think that's because Oscar Wilde was um, a queer man. So he was sort of out of step with the society around him. This definitely does have a lot of interesting queer themes to it. So if you're looking for some like, not just like totally, standard representation that classics tend to have. Um, by the way, that's a whole other, like I'm gonna also at some point do modern classics because like for, for good or for ill, what we have received in the English speaking world as the canon is very white. It's very Christian, it's very straight, it's very cis. So the cool thing is, is that now that we have more modern classics emerging or sort of like rediscovering older classics, um, there's like, I think there's new people entering and it's it's more interesting and more representative. So I will definitely do a video about that at some point, like where to start with modern classics. Um, but anyway, so for now, this is one of the better like representation moments of the received canon that we have. So I like that about it. And it's just like the themes in this one are really profound about like what what it means to have like vanity and I think especially like in a social media age in terms of like image this is really resonant in terms of its themes so yeah I just think that this ages super well it's approachable and just a really thought-provoking book that I think you'll really enjoy it's not super plot driven but there is an interesting um, kind of magical realism element to this um, yeah just all around really good I would also by the way recommend Oscar Wilde's plays most notably the importance of being earnest which is laugh out loud funny in my opinion but La Lady Windermere's fan is also very good okay so a few other less like straight traditional what people usually recommend to you if they are recommending things my third recommendation honestly after all, after Pride and Prejudice and Picture of Dorian Gray is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Uh, again, I recommend this to you if you know you like mysteries. This is sometimes cited as the first murder mystery kind of thing, or like this in The Moonstone or some of the first like mystery novels. Um, there's a few that are in contention for that title, but whatever. Uh, so anyway, I just love this. And I also, again, love the themes in this one. This has a lot of subversive gender stereotype things happening in it. And a very fun mustache twirling villain that I love. This one, those would be like my top three recommendations, but I don't think Wilkie Collins gets the love and respect that he deserves, um, but he should. In terms of like something that's just like thought provoking and kind of bonkers, I thought I would mention Tis Pity She's a Whore. Um, I don't even know who the author is of this. John Ford, there you go. Uh, John Ford was a playwright in the Restoration period, so basically think after Shakespeare. And the reason I recommend this is that this is just like such a weird bonkers play that's basically about incest. And it has like super interesting insights into sort of what the received understanding of science and like specifically biology and like sexual biology was at the time or reproductive biology. Uh, this is just really like, they're twins and basically they're arguing like we shared the same womb so that means we should be in love and you're just like what like what is happening um so anyway I recommend this as sort of an unusual <laughs> uh restoration play that you may not have read but is like kind of crazy and fun um speaking of English plays if I was going to give you one sort of like non-traditional uh Shakespeare recommendation I love The Merchant of Venice and I think that it is one of the most modern Shakespeare plays in terms of sort of its underlying thematic content. I think it became an especially relevant play after the events of the Holocaust in the 40s. I think it kind of took on new life and new resonance. And it's it's a great, it's often something I will point to as an example of knowingness in a text where the author can't even imagine all of the possible meanings that a text can take on over time as cultures and history change. So anyway, I just think that it's one that has aged really well and is a really important play, really thought provoking and has a lot to say about like racism, bigotry, and then like also sort of like the over writing power of love and like the hollowness of vengefulness. It's just really good. So that would be like another Shakespeare recommendation. Another Jane Austen recommendation is Emma. This isn't like a super crazy recommendation or anything, but I just will say, I know some people don't like Emma and feel like she is kind of a whiny entitled little 
brat. But that's like the point of the book. And I love, I love how fond Jane Austen clearly is of Emma. I think I also probably am more fond of Emma than I should be just because I like the movie Clueless so much. Um, but anyway, I just, I think that this is another, uh, along with Pride and Prejudice, I think this is the other Jane Austen novel that reads the most like straightforwardly to a modern reader in terms of just purely the prose style like it's the most contemporary um so anyway i shout out to emma she gets some hate but i love her okay a few more uh gulliver's travels is the book i picked out but also just jonathan swift in general like i really love a modest proposal is great but he's just like such a great satirical writer and again i think that his themes there's a lot of knowingness in his text and themes that transcend their particular time and place basically his works deal a lot with sort of like the racism of the english to the irish um but as an american reader there's a lot of resonance in terms of like themes again of white people versus non-white people in the u.s um but anyway i gulliver's travels is like a really fun satirical novel very easy to get through um maybe another one that could go in the category of you've heard a lot of these stories before so it should be pretty like familiar um so I think that's a good choice and then a couple that I've read more recently that I thought I would recommend so first of all Cranford um is often talked about uh it, well one reason I picked it is that it is shorter um but it's often talk of, talked about as a very approachable uh Elizabeth Gaskell novel because it's so satirical and really funny it definitely does have that, but I also really love the, th I always, I'm always talking about the thematic content. That's what I go to classics for, okay? Really like solid thematic content that makes me wonder at like how universal the human experience really is across time and place. That's like my favorite feeling from a classic. Um, and this just makes me think a lot about like gender roles and like how constrained women and men for that matter in certain ways have been across time and place in terms of what that was expected of them, what they couldn't, couldn't do, etc. So a lot of people come for the humor. I would stay for the theme. And then my last in this category is Howard's End by Ian e. Forster, which I read earlier this year. And this has like, I mean, this was written at the turn of the 1900s. So like, I think maybe like 1910-ish. But like, this is an ast astonishingly prescient novel in terms of its sensibilities about sexuality and gender. Um, and just like class, honestly, as well. Like there's, this really speaks to our current geopolitical moment, I think, very well, um, considering it's more than 100 years old. So if you're looking for a classic that I think really reads resonantly for today, I would definitely recommend this. Okay, and then last but not least, I wanted to give you three doorstopper classics recommendations that are big, long, hunkin' novels that are intimidating because of their length and because they are classics, but that I would tell you I think are worth the effort. Now, I need to caveat and say only one of these have I read in the last five years, so these are my impressions from when I read them as uh, like a kid and a teen primarily, um, but I think it should say something that I like them as a kid and a teen. But anyway, the first one that I read more recently is Middlemarch. Again, political satire or political commentary here. Fascinating gender role stuff, fascinating. Um, it is like kind of an English country novel uh, that I think doesn't have some of the stodginess that some of this Victorian, that genre of Victorian literature can have. Like it reads very fresh, at least in my opinion. And obviously all of these are my opinions, guys. Like, of course, some people are not going to like these. But from what I remember and what I read, I really like this when I read it a few years ago. Um, next, in college, I read and really enjoyed War and Peace. Now, this is a project, and I would tell you that the biggest barrier to entry here is very similar to Lord of the Rings in that there are so many names and in so many people who have similar names, and it's just very hard to keep track of everyone. But if you can do that, this novel, I mean, it's like a sweeping war epic. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it really rewards reading basically. Like it's, there's a reason it's sort of like the stereotypical classic that's hard to get through in terms of like, you know, the big doorstopper everyone's trying to make their way through. And I think that this totally holds up. So I don't know, to me, I know that this is a divided opinion, but to me, I think that is a doorstopper that's really worth it. And then this is the one that I read as a kid. So I most like, this is the most distant in my memory, but the, just how beloved this is here on BookTube and seeing people kind of refind it. Um, and this is gonna, I think, gonna be what I'm gonna reread next year. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Same for The Three Musketeers, to be totally honest with you. Um, but anyway, and The Man in the Iron Man, like that whole little 
like Alexander Dumas in general, he's kind of like the Dickens of France in terms of just like really popular, readable, compulsive, like really memorable characters, very action adventure-y. Um, and The Cat of Monte Cristo is a doorstopper, but I think there's a lot of plot happening. It's not like a chore to get through. It's really like enjoyable fun. Okay guys, so that is my where to start with classics recommendation video. Again, people have been asking for this from me for a very long time. So I hope it lived up to expectations. Um, and you know, I always reserve the right to change my mind about some of these recommendations in the future or to give new ones or whatever. But for now, that is where I would tell you to start with classics. Um, and I really, again, I love classics and I would love to see more people embracing them as something that is enjoyable, not work not purely just because it's good for you, but because it's fun and like edifying to you at like a soul level. Um, but anyway, so those are my recommendations. If you are somebody who reads and enjoys classics, definitely let me know what recommendation you give to people um, of where they should start if they are looking to get into the, the classics game. It is Victober here on BookTube, so uh, now is a great time to pick up a Victorian classic and have at it. So that is where I'm gonna leave you guys. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that will do it. I hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!